the dirt path that winds down the valley outside his cabin would make him question the need to go to school. In fact, going into town seemed pointless. It was good exercise, it was a beautiful view, but there was simply nothing to be accomplished with going to school. Still, his father made him carry out the deed, along with many other chores, such as prepping the wood and lamp oil, melting ink, and tending to the garden. His father lived old-fashioned, and the son preferred it that way. On the dirt path, there were possibly unknown dangers on the walk to school. Wildlife, pedophiles, muggers, and murderers. But he carried no weapons or defense, while his father hunted up in the mountains. It never really had worried him, but he always had an escape route on any part of the trail, and he always had his eye out. But even with all the knowledge and planning, nothing could have prepared him for what was out there, what he saw, and what happened. It all started several months ago, when he was walking home, and on a particular day he felt suspicious, so he stayed sharp. While he was walking, he saw things. They were mostly hidden by trees, but he can make out that they were humanoid. They were twisted into wrong shapes and angles, and they were white, but they looked stained with gray ash. As he walked past, they would seemingly watch him, but they didn't have any eyes. When far enough ahead, they could soon follow. He got home safely, but his anxiety was intense. He felt lightheaded. When he looked out the window, he caught a glimpse of them fading back into the foliage. His dad would refuse to believe him, despite of his worry over the... monsters, I guess you could say? He didn't like the word, but somehow it was appropriate. As the days went by, he stopped going outside. He didn't tend to the herbs and potatoes. He only left the cabin to go and to from school. He got better looks at them as they followed his routine. They were tall and twisted as though their skin didn't fit right. One was crossing the street in front of him, a little ways up the path. They have really small feet with claws. They had hands that were different every time he saw them. Sometimes infant hands, spikes, long thin hands, bloody hands. Name the kind of hands and they probably had it. He stopped sleeping at night. He ate less. He was getting skinny and sick. His eyes grew lifeless and haunted. He was losing perception of reality. He was not scared, angry, or sad. He was not feeling he had long forgotten who he used to be. He's just now an empty skin sack that walks and hardly talks. He felt he was being watched at all times. That is, until yesterday. He was tripping uphill on his pathway home, stopping frequently to throw up. He never did. He just had the feeling he had to, when he heard the dirt compress about 20 paces behind him, just for the fun of it. He shuffled his feet and turned around. There was a man with a scraggly beard. He had dirty clothes and glasses. His hands were shaky and holding a long knife, licking it slowly with his cancer-ridden tongue. The boy instantly came back. He looked around for one of the old paths that he scooped out. He was too surprised to make a run for it. The stranger grew closer and closer and spoke in a monetary, raspy voice. Don't scream. Don't you dare take off your pack. He pointed his knife at the boy's feet. The child started to cry. He dropped his pack in the mud. The stranger kicked it off into the bushes. He took a moment to itch himself. You don't need that where you're going. He started to reach for the boy. Suddenly, there was a thunder-like battle as dirty things came out of the woods. And the man was swooped up in their hands that had changed into mouths full teeth. The stranger's screams were drowned out into ripping and tearing as four of the things ripped him into chunks and ate him through their hands. When they had finished, they had stood erect and helped the child off the ground and dressed him with infant hands. One retrieved his bag from the bushes and dispersed back into the woods, leaving nothing behind but his knife. Not even blood was there. His clothes were clean and so was his bag. He heard the battle horn again, and more screaming being 
drowned in the distance. That day, he realized that the things had been stalking him, but they weren't monsters. That day, they protected him from a real monster. Real monsters are plain and will not hide. They will not stop. They're scary. He didn't know what to call them. Every hero had a name. Something inside him told that they were called the Hollows. Yeah, the Hollows.